Okay, so let's try to complete uh, our cast for for the login method. Uh, I noticed a, um, a mistake that we are going to correct in the slides here because it's uh, carried over from last week's uh, version of Passport. Uh, for initializing Passport to user session, we had well, this Passport of session method shown here in the slides, uh, but uh, actually the code to be used is password.authenticate session here. Okay, so it's a bit different. There's no session method. Sorry, I got tangled with that. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's, it's a bit different, uh, the, the, the method to say, you know, to tell passport to use the session for storing the authentication information. Okay, so the, the right information is always from the running project uh, that is working. So in, some, in a couple of points, I noticed a couple of errors in the slides. We are going to, to update them uh, um, later on. Okay, so right now we have uh, the verification, we have the session, let's start, and we have configured all of that. So it's time to see it running, okay? To actually call this method, because up to now we just did a lot of, of uh, configuration like, like uh, we saw, okay? Uh, we have this function serialize and deserialize user, okay? Uh, here the code is just uh, stored in the same object it receives. Uh, it may look uh, useless. These two functions may look useless, uh, especially in the local strategy case, uh, because it's just calling a callback uh, with the same parameter of the callback that I just received. Okay? Uh, but actually it's transferring information from the session to the request, uh, and from the verify, verify function to the session. Uh, um, since it's not, uh, um, you know, the password can be configured in different mechanisms, right? maybe it's the session, maybe it's we, we decide to store the information somewhere else. That's why it, uh, it requires us to define this couple of callbacks. But actually, hmm, we, uh, we don't need to do a lot more than just uh, now, passing the same object uh, around. Okay, now, uh, where are these callbacks and to this function used? Uh, they're used in two different places. One is the, in the login function itself, uh, and the other is all in all the other APIs. Um, the login function is special because it's the one that creates the session, is then the validated password that expects the username and password to be there in the body and so on. And uh, it's a, the, it generates a special middleware for this purpose, which is called uh, authenticate. Password.authenticate local is uh, um, inserted as a middleware on the API where we want the login action to happen. So in our APIs, there will be one uh, API where we want to execute the authentication function, actually calling the verify function. And uh, we specify which strategy to use uh, to authenticate this specific API. If it's successful, then we have, if everything goes right with the verify, with the serialized session and so on, then we in, inside the, uh, the request object, uh, we have this new field, user. That is automatically extracted, not automatically, with our code, but it's, uh, uh, we, don't, we don't see it explicitly. No? It's not the user from the request, but it's the user from the database. Let's uh, uh, not make confusion. It's easy to make confusion because in the request, we saw that there were Two mandatory fields, username and password. You see username. So request.body.username was the data coming from the form. Request.body.username, the username field in the body of the request. Okay, that's there. We don't need to check it. Passport is going to check it for us and will create a user object here that is coming from the deserializer function. Okay. 
So we have, I'd say, an, um, uh, an easier interface, uh, and this user object we will have the fields that are inside. Okay, is the object that, that I created. Uh, we see it here. We have one special API. which is here, okay? The basic version is this one. Uh, we call them sessions as an endpoint uh, with the idea with the post of a session will create a new session and uh, a get of the session will give me information about the current session, okay? The basic version is just this. We specify the endpoint for authentication, maybe sessions, maybe login, whatever. And when we receive a POST uh, call, we insert uh, the authentication middleware here. So before getting here, password will do all the work. Basically, we'll extract username and password. Okay, since it's local, it will check how we initialize the local strategy. Okay, remember we, we defined a local strategy object uh, at the beginning of the hour here, that will make uh, the custom verification we decided with our database. So password will extract the feeds username and password from the body of the request, and we'll pass this couple of information to our verify function. The verify function will query the database, do all the cryptography, and give me a user object. This user object is serialized into the session, and then it's deserialized and returned in, in the request, if everything goes right, okay? Um, this is the, uh, uh, the good case. If you want to manage uh, errors, uh, we, uh, we is commented here, there's a lot of uh, uh, stuff that can go wrong. And the errors in the authentication are uh, specified in the callback of the authenticate uh, middleware. So we are not uh, handling errors in the body of the here, in the body of the route or the access route. We try to confine everything into the authenticate method. Say, okay, if something is wrong. Uh, then we can uh, send an error message uh, and something like that. Okay? Uh, so this is the, the simplest version where, of course, if the user is not authenticated, we are returning an, an undefined here. And so the browser will know it, the, the, the client will know it. Okay? But we are not managing any trouble that may happen here. Hmm? So this is the simplest version. Uh, Passport will manage everything for us and will populate us the user uh, information for us. Uh, and this information, right now, everything was in the server. And uh, imagine now React, the React application that called this API. So I'm calling the login API or the post sessions API that we saw here in the code uh, with the body of username and password. And I receive an object back that describes the current user that was just validated. Now just we, we must store this information in the React API. So normally in, uh, in React we will do an API call and then a set state for remembering this information so that also the front end can know that the user was uh, uh, validated. Uh, let's see, for example, in the client code, how it was implemented here. Okay. So there was a, sorry, login. Uh, the login method, what does the login method do? So we have first uh, the low level, the API, that does the fetch, and is not any different from any of the other posts. So we create a URL, we create a body, 
the body contains these uh, credentials that are the, um, the username and password object, and then we wait for the response. Okay? So at the API level, nothing changes. It's just a normal POST request. Um, except for one detail that we'll see in a moment. From the application point of view, we are in app. We have one handle login, another method here, handle login, that will call the login method. So login, uh, we just saw it, uh, it just does the, the, the post, okay? Uh, the handle login method takes the credential from, from the form and uh, if everything is okay, it can set a state, saying, okay, you are successfully logged in or not, or you are not, so there's an error, or you can set an error message of, the, of some type. Okay, so uh, from the application, we submit, from the submission, from the login form, we submit the data. We call the handler for the submission, we do the post, and if everything is right, we must store somewhere in the, the application the knowledge uh, that uh, um, we, are, uh, we are now logged in. Where are we setting it? Okay, yeah, the, the simple example, set logged in, logged in is just a state into app. Most likely, you would want to move this into a context so that every component could share this knowledge without having to pass it down as a property. And second, maybe you need some more information than just uh, I'm logged in, yes or not. Okay, right now we are not using, in this example code, uh, you see that we are not using the user object. Okay, except for writing a message, welcome username. But normally we, could prob we would probably store also as a state variable or a context variable also this user information. Okay, so instead of just saying logged in, yes or not, also the information about the user. It may be useful, so this depends on, or depending on what the, uh, what the client needs to do. It may be useful for the client also to be able to retrieve this information later. So right now I have the user object. If I don't store it right now immediately and I need it later, I don't need to do another login that will require the password. Because the session is already open, so I could ask for the server, sorry, please give, can you give me the user object because I didn't save it, I need it right now. And so for example, we have the, an implementation of a get over the session that we just get the request.user object that is automatically populated and deserialized from the session and we just return it. So this uh, get, this get from session will just give me the current user of the current session. So this is now in the hands of the client. Whether the client wants to store this user in a state and then propagate it to the components, or I don't care right now, when I will care about the, this uh, user, I will just ask to the server for this information. Of course, in the case the user information doesn't change, it would be better probably to, to store it here. But imagine that this information contains also some other dynamic, I don't know, the number of messages or the number of notifications, some other information that may change over time, it could be useful to refresh also this information. Okay, but there are two ways. You, we know that from the login method on, we are in all APIs, we have this user attribute in the request. And so we can also always use it or return it to the, to the browser. Okay. Uh, the example here, so okay, maybe we have an API just to retrieve digital information or to store them in the context. We have these two basic possibilities and everything in between. Okay, so right now we logged in, 
and uh, we want to be able to specify that some of the other APIs, not the login one, need to be protected. So they could be called only after a successful login. And uh, um, yeah, sorry, it was. So everything is already in place. The browser already sends the cookie, password already unlocks it. We must just, uh, um, sorry, let, let's go here and then go back. Uh, inside the route, the express route, we have an additional method that is in, injected there by the strategy, which is called is authenticated. So this is a function that returns a Boolean value. If uh, uh, the authentication is valid, that means that in the session we have a valid user store, which implies that in the past we did a successful verification. Okay, we don't check the password every time. We check the password once and then we store in the session information that the user is valid. We popul um, passport populates request, request.user and uh, gives us this function, is authenticated. So basically, what we could do simply is uh, uh, to, to test it, like we did here. Okay, if we have an API, and this API can only be called when a, when a valid session is, uh, is open. And so, first of all, we'll check, is the session valid? I'm not validating the session now. It has to be validated before. And so, it will say yes, and this means that we have, we do have the, so I deleted this, uh, we have the user information, we can use it. If the authenticated is false, then we don't have any user because the, there was no successful uh, verification before. And so we can, in this case, we can uh, uh, tell uh, that we have an error because the user is not authenticated. So we can use this if statement in all the APIs that need to be protected. Of course, we, can, we could also do more. Okay, we can check whether the user authenticated and the user profile is a student or whether the user profile is a professor and enable only some uh, APIs depending on the user profile. But this is just an if statement, okay? So all the checks are done here and uh, are basically relying on the, on the, um, on the session information. Uh, or we could uh, save us some time for typing and, that's, and uh, re risk of forgetting by creating um, a middleware. So this if statement, if is not authenticated, then generate an error. We want to apply that for all the API calls. For all the API calls that need to be protected. So instead of writing into every method, if uh, not uh, uh, request dot is authenticated, then uh, response dot uh, JSON and so on with an error message and the status 404 or whatever, we could put it into create one our own middleware. In Express, middlewares are just functions, remember. Function with a, a third parameter, which is a, the function for calling, the, to, for continuing the request. So actually what we are doing is to create, a if we want, we can create one function, is logged in, okay? that works as a, as a middleware. It takes the request and the response and manipulates them. As long as the middleware is called after passport is run, this, this middleware uh, may query the request. So for example, if request is authenticated, then OK. Return next, go forward with the processing of the response. So next, we'll call the next middleware in turn. So at every router, we have a, a sequence of middleware that are being called with the next method. And the last one, we return the response object to the client. 
Otherwise, so we, we call the next step that will be probably the user code, hmm? the, the route code. Otherwise, if, you, if it's not authenticated, we can, as a middleware, already give a response. Response.json, you know, we send the response. We don't want the re this request to be processed. We already know the response. The response is no. I generate an error. Okay? So the, the, uh, the code here for the user will never be executed if uh, the, middle, uh, if the um, session is not authenticated. So in this case, uh, I created this that does nothing instead, except going forward if the user is authenticated and interrupt the sequence of processing right now with an error code if the user is not authenticated. Uh, this means that we just need to add this middleware, so the name of the function in between, all the APIs that we want to protect. And this code will always be executed before my callback. Hmm? Or we can also use app.use for installing this logged in to all the methods. All the methods from that point on in the code. So what we see usually is to have a set of APIs that are not protected at the beginning. And then at some point in the server code, we do app.user is logged in. And all the APIs that we define from that point of the code on will be protected. Oh, we protect it means that they reject the request uh, if the uh, is not authenticated. Hmm? I don't remember here what we did. Probably we didn't install that. Is logged in, sorry. Yeah, no, it's just put here. But we could also do app.user is logged in. And this will protect all the API. Okay, that's so. So you don't even have to remember all of that. You just have all the APIs before this point will be executed normally. All the APIs after this point will be protected. That's why we don't put this, we should not be to put this at the beginning, like where we put all the other use configurations. There is also, okay, so this is the idea. There's a problem here which is not easy, and one of the many problems that are not easy to, to debug, is again about cores. Uh, we say that the cookies are managed by the browser, and we said also that the fetch calls are filtered by the browser according to the conf course configuration that allows or denies some, um, uh, some calls to be made or not, okay? Uh, with our simple configuration that we had in last week uh, for the course, uh, saying allow everything, actually that didn't allow cookies to be transferred. So actually the cookies will, would not have been sent uh, or received uh, between the client and the browser. Okay? So in order to make it work, we need to specify in the course configuration, both in the server and in the client, uh, that we want to transfer also the session information. So it's a couple of configuration options, okay? Because otherwise you will get uh, course errors, uh, or even worse, you, go, you don't get any errors, but the cookie is dropped and is not uh, used. So you see that the login is successful, but the session is not remembered. Why? Because the cookie is not being sent due to course. Hmm? So you can do the calls, uh, but the, the, head, the um, set cookie header is not passed through. So uh, what we should do is to, in, when we initialize the course method, the course, sorry, uh, middleware, we should pass uh, an additional attribute credential true. Say, okay, I want to allow credential session information to be exchanged. 
one side effect is that if we enable the credential, we cannot use an asterisk for saying, okay, I'm, I'm let's say, allowing everybody to call. You must specify a specific origin. Remember last time we say just, you up course, open and close parentheses, allow everybody, or it, would, it was equivalent to write an asterisk, uh, but the asterisk with the credential doesn't work well. So it's a requirement that if you um, allow the session to be created, then you must tell me who is going to create the session, which is the application that, that wants this. Uh, and so in this case, we have the URL of the React application. The origin of the fetch, remember. The origin is the, the name of the, the, the address of the server that was delivering the JavaScript code that is now trying to do the fetch. So, okay, you are fetch, you are in a JavaScript file. Where did this JavaScript file come from? It came from the React server on port 3000. Okay, so I allow, I the API server on port 3001 will allow your requests because they know you. Also be careful about uh, naming localhost or 127.7001 depending on how you started the server, okay? So there are a lot of little things to debug. If you see that the, the um, uh, sessions don't go through or are not remembered, check this course configuration. There, were, there was also a bug sometimes in the past uh, that happens when you have uh, several uh, uh, IP addresses on your computer. Okay, this, uh, was, there was some problem when uh, you connect your computer to a network uh, that will give you a public address. Okay, in the Wi-Fi you will have a private address and doesn't care. But if you have a public address, sometimes uh, the Express will publish the website on the public address, not on the localhost address. And so the application uh, goes through the external interface instead of the loopback interface, and you will get, you'll see a request coming from a different uh, address than localhost, which is the same, uh, the address of the same computer, but it's uh, on the external network, okay? So there are some cases that, that are hard to debug. Just have a look at the, at the addresses that are stored in the messages. Mm -hmm. This is from the server point of view. So in our code here, we have this configuration, which should be the default configuration and should work whenever we are you know, in, a, in a normal network configuration. And the same must be done on the client side. Huh? Because course is uh, uh, requires to be sym symmetrically configured in the server and the client. When we do the fetch, we should have an option in the fetch with the credential include. And this is also true if we are doing a simple get. Now remember that the get didn't require any say configuration objects to be specified. We use the second parameter only when we use the post to change the method, to change the application type and so on. In this case, even in a, in a simple get, we need to specify this additional uh, attribute. So in your api.js file, remember to add for each method this additional uh, property so that uh, um, the, the cookie should be exchanged. And so like, here we have the, this api.js in the client where we had the get all exams, blah, blah, blah. This is a normal get here, but we have this uh, configuration objects that allows the cookie to be exchanged. Otherwise, in this fact, the browser will not send the cookie and the server will reje re reject the request because you didn't give me the session ID to prove that you are uh, the right client. Hmm? Uh, and also in, in all the other APIs. And as a special case, uh, this attribute should also be sent in the login API, which may seem strange because at login time, we don't have the session yet. We are creating it. So, I don't have a session, uh, sorry, a cookie to give you yet. 
I'm just asking you to create it. But if I don't, so the problem here would not be to send the cookie because I don't have one. The problem would be to store the cookie that I retrieved, that I received in response. So these credentials include, in, in, will include the cookie when I send the request and will save the cookie when I receive the response. So in, login, in the login method, uh, the, what actually we need uh, is to be able to store the cookie that we receive in the response. Hmm? If we, uh, so the, the slides also is telling us that the login request, the login API is not a protected one. We should be, call, we should be able to call the login when we are not logged in, huh? otherwise it would be useless. But uh, we still need uh, to have uh, uh, so the, the cookie exchange to enable the cookie exchange for, for both of them. So in the server it's easier because the configuration of the course option is valid for all the calls. We are installing the middleware here and so all the APIs will automatically have uh, uh, this option set. In the client, uh, we must remember to add it to all the fetch uh, from the login on, okay? Login, logout, and all the, uh, all the protected APIs. If there are some APIs that not, don't need to be protected, okay, you can, uh, you can forget about that. Um, just don't confuse this name here, credentials, which is the name of the key the name of the header to be, sorry, the name of the option with this credential here, which is just the name of the, of the object that contains username and password. So they are totally unrelated. The final point is how to terminate a session with the logout action. At least it's very easy to terminate a session on the server side because we just have to call the logout method on the request object. Again, logout is another method that is injected into the request by passport, like the is authenticate method, like the dot user attribute and so on. Okay, so after we install passport, we have this logout method that will destroy uh, the, um, the, the, the session information associated with this uh, uh, validated user. So after we call logout, the, um, every following request to is authenticated will fail, will return false. That's normal, yes? No. Uh, so the question was, uh, what happens when the session expires? Uh, the expiration of the session, when, uh, uh, when you set an expiration date on the cookie, the browser will not use that cookie after the date. So it means that the first action you, that you do on the browser after the expiration date will come as an, uh, a request without a cookie associated. And so it will fail the is authenticated method because it doesn't, it doesn't have a session ID. Um, also, the server should be able to purge in some way the, the old information because the information that we stored with the old session ID in the session object uh, is, not, is no longer accessible. No? It cannot be retrieved in, in any way because that session ID, which is only stored in the browser, uh, will never be sent again because the browser will refuse to send it if it's expired. Um, so, from the, from the point of, the, of view of the server, it doesn't care, basically. Okay, he, he knows that he will receive a request with a valid session until the expiration date. The server cannot uh, distinguish a wrong answer from a different browser that just try to make an API call or a valid request from a browser where the session is expired. For, it, for the server, they are the same. They have to be refused. That's it. If we want the user to be able to, to, to continue, we will have to have a secondary mechanism. Like usually many websites, uh, you really tend to send, uh, to set two cookies for you. One is a short-lived cookie for the session, and one is a permanent cookie for 
the identity for remember who you are okay and so they they, they can revalidate you uh, with information on the permanent cookie by generating a new uh, a new say temporary cookie but it's much more complex uh, Okay, so no logout action is, is actually, uh, the server doesn't know when a session expires. The server cannot do anything when a session expires. Mm, just, it's just something that is not happening. So, uh, this means that in the browser, it's, uh, the question is simple, sim seems an easy que question, but uh, it means that in the, um, in the application, every time we are calling an API, like, uh, what is that? This one? It may fail. For a number of reasons, one of the reasons could be the session is expired. So an API that was perfectly valid one, one minute before, then it becomes uh, no longer valid. And so we should take into account uh, of, all, of this possibility when, when we handle the errors. Okay? And in the basic case, okay, we redirect the user to the home page, say please log in again or something like that. Hmm? The problem is that uh, when the uh, the problem is on the client side. Uh, this is easy on the, uh, on the server side. Let just me add one detail about the server side. Uh, we must always remember also to close the connection. Okay? Even if okay, there's a logout request, we must close or send the HTTP response. And this is an asynchronous call. So when the logout is operated, then we close the, the request. Otherwise, uh, we'll have the, the promise that will be rejected because uh, the the client, the API code, is still waiting for an answer. It's easy to forget about that because, okay, okay it's logout, out, we delete everything. Yeah, we delete everything in the, in the server, but we still have an HTTP call open to be closed. Okay, you have a question? Yes. Uh, why do we use uh, the post method and not, uh, let's say, the delete method? Yeah, the yeah. This delete session could also be uh, I don't know, maybe in this code here was implemented as delete. Uh, uh, wait. Uh, handle log. No, sorry, I'm in the, in the client. Yeah, but yeah, I, I agree. The delete uh, could also be a good uh, method for. No, it wasn't the API. Yeah, in fact, it was. It's another. The code is better than, than the slides, uh, as a general rule. So these sessions as current uh, represent the current session. You want information about the current session, use a get. Uh, you want to destroy the current session, you can use a delete. Mm -hmm. Yes. I agree with you and, uh, and with the code. On the other hand, uh, we should remember that when we call delete on the server, the client should behave correctly. So even, uh, okay, it's, there's no automatic way when we do the logout, we are in, in, the, in the client again, handle logout, when I call this API, it will destroy the session. But then I should remember <laughs> to clean up everything. Because actually the client sends a logout, but all the states are still valid, it still contains some value. So it's my responsibility to, to clean up the information in the browser. Uh, to, to, destroy, to I don't know, destroy the components or at least uh, uh, reset the state information so that I don't show any more information uh, that was related to a session that is not valid anymore. What I don't want to risk Okay, if I log out, then my friend comes in and still can see my information. Before, even, might be even before logging, or, or, or he logs with his name and he will see still my information. So we should be careful when we, when we log out, the session is destroyed, so on the server side I cannot do any damage, but on the client side, the data is still there until I 
explicitly destroyed uh, in some way. And this should happen when I explicitly log out or when the session expires for some, for some reason. Uh, so for uh, adding to your answer before, if I realize, if I do an, app, an API call and the response is that the, se the session is not valid anymore, then all the data that I have in the client uh, should be purged in some way. Hmm? Technically, I can still see it, but I have no way of refreshing it for, from the server or sending it to ser the server again until I log in again. And at the login, I will reload everything. Hmm? So, it's a burden on, on the browser, on the, on the client, uh, no? not only to dehydrate, so reload all the information from the server at login time or at refresh time, but also to know when to destroy it so that it's not visible anymore. The easiest version is this one. I have just one flag, logged in false, and if, if login is false, I disable all the application. Okay? I have a route that only will show the login. You need to login. And in log, at the login phase, I will reconstruct everything. It will be a bit more complex if we are uh, an application that has a public part, so there are some routes uh, that should be visible, even if the user is not logged in, and some other in login mode. So when you log out, uh, you are disabling in some way some parts, but also other parts of the website are, are varied. Hmm? Um, so the difficulty of logout is not uh, closing the session, but uh, uh, managing the state, uh, as always, in, in React. This is an example of uh, for example what he's doing here is uh, a conditional rendering here in the in the home page say so, okay in the home page I should render the exam route or whatever unless I'm not logged in so if the link is false, I'm not rendering the right component, but I'm rendering this navigate component that will redirect the application to login. So everything you are being thrown away uh, if you are not logged in. This is a, a very crude way we are okay, redirecting away. So all the we are protecting the server routes with the is authenticated method, so that. Uh, no server route can be called uh, unless you are properly authenticated. We should also, in the client, disable the React routes that would show uh, information related to logged in users. So in, in every router, you should decide, okay, is, should this be visible if I write the route, or should I protect this? Uh, uh, so one possibility could, could be to have one component that contains only the protected routes and, uh, and uh, you put the check at the beginning, so none of these routes, uh, we, we nested routes, okay? We have a component with certain routes uh, and uh, one child uh, that contains the protected routes uh, that will only be rendered if the session is valid. It requires a bit of more of a setup because you need to create a context with the user information that should be accessible there. It takes a bit of thinking about the, the organization of the application. Okay? When to set the information and when to destroy it. And which parts are public and which parts are um, depending on a specific user, or on the login status or the profile of the user. Uh, so, just in summary, we saw a lot of work for configuration, in the server especially. In the server, we have to specify the options for course. We have to specify the option for the local strategy. Sorry. For the local strategy. In the DAO, we have to handle all the um, cryptography issues. We have to provide the interface between the request and the session with these two seamless useless functions. Uh, the middleware, uh, initialize the session, link the session to passport. All of this is a, 
at the beginning of our code. Different bits and pieces that serve different purposes, but work together. Once you do, we do this, then actually on the server side, it's very easy. We just add the middleware when we want to protect a route. That's it. And we just uh, use uh, authenticate uh, in the login function. And uh, okay, and the, and the logout function and so on. So these are three different routes. Uh, but then for the normal implementation of the application, we have the example here. The only difference we have is this. Okay? That's why you know, uh, after the initial setup, which is quite difficult, uh, everything is very easy to implement. Request does, is authenticated, yes or not? If yes, request does the user. In this case, we don't use it because we are uh, reading all the exams. But remember that in your method, you always have the request.user object. So uh, if you want to have the exam of that specific user, the information about the user is already available. Okay, this exam will be request.user. You can know who is the currently logged in user or other information about that user. In your, in your route. So you don't need to specify it in the path, in the route, uh, because you already know that. And extracting a record on the user is more reliable than receiving the information about the user from the client, from the API. Because here we are sure that this user just passed through the cryptographic test uh, to the hash comparison. While a parameter coming from the client uh, could, be, could be wrong or could be not validated. Uh, that's it. We have this and we have request of user inside the APIs. Yes? If we want to enable or disable different APIs for different users, can't we use a unique uh, middleware, right? Or we can use... You, yes, if you want to... This, this middleware is just... Uh, uh, if it's authenticated, then go on. Huh? But here, we c you can use a request of user and decide different stuff so you can uh, uh, yeah the difficulty to understand which is the route that's been called Depending on the, on the user, I, mean. uh, Maybe. I would I would create uh, different files uh, with different uh, um, routes uh, corresponding to different types of users uh, and then install a middleware in each of them And middleware that is, uh, depends on the current user. Okay. Uh, my suggestion is to try to steal from this code <laughs> and move it into your project, uh, trying to be carefully one piece at a time and, uh, and try it on a small project before moving to the large project uh, and so on. Okay, so I think that's all for today, but just for the semester also. Uh, we'll get in touch for the exam, and uh, of course, uh, Slack is always open for any kind of question or discussion. Okay? Thank you for being with me. Bye-bye. <laughs>